Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, we are getting back into synthesizing Ruby. So, quite a while back now, we did a video, series of videos, first built an HHO torch, and then got a mixture of aluminum oxide and chromium oxide, and in the HHO torch flame, we were able to basically inject little particles of that through this feed, and a... <laughs> <laughs> Sonicare toothbrush, the good old vibrator, and through that we were able to do flame fusion to make basic synthetic ruby. It, nothing gem quality about it. Today I want to try stepping that up. So I got this little micro torch here for <laughs> an unbelievable $25 on Amazon. Now, it's uh, most definitely a cheap clone of the Smith Little Torch, um, which uh, I've used before. I, I love that torch. And this is a pretty decent clone of it. The, the valves aren't that great. But then again, the original name brand Little Torch isn't all that great either. So, <laughs> so what we're going to do is use this, and hopefully, since we'll have a bit more flame this time, we'll be able to more successfully produce larger rubies. At least that's the game plan. So let's take a look at this little torch first, because I'm uh, curious to give this thing a try. And I got all my regulators on. Get my safety goggles. Ugh. Oh, these things are old school. And there's our oxygen. So the oxygen is coming from, if you saw the video I did a while back on the oxygen, oxygen concentrator I picked up and a compressor. I'm just filling little medical tanks and I have an adapter to hook it up to the reg. So here's a piece of standard 12 gauge copper wire. See how it does. Getting hot. <laughs> Look at that. That quick we're able to melt copper. Beauty. Can't ask for better than that. So, <laughs> now that we know the flame's hot as shit, now, an HHO flame is, uh, what is it, around 5,300, something like that, if I'm remembering correctly. And a uh, oxypropane flame is, I think, uh, 4,100? Uh, either way, we're plenty over the melting point of aluminum oxide, so we should be able to produce synthetic ruby with it. See if we can melt the fire brick. Oh, my goggles fogged up. Can't really see what I'm doing. Now this is K23 fire brick rated for 2300 Fahrenheit. Obviously we're well above that. Oh yeah, she's melting. No trouble melting that at all. Hopefully you guys will be able to see this. Look at that. Pretty damn impressive. So I got my toothbrush all charged up. <laughs> and if you remember here, this is a little powder dispenser. So this houses the... Uh, Aluminum oxide, chromium oxide mix, and then it comes out through the needle tip here. The issue was it kept getting stuck, and then it would just all pour out at once, and then it would get stuck. Using this, it, it gives, because this acts as an agitator, so it gives a consistent uh, drop of the powder. Works pretty well. Just don't stab yourself with it. So just in case you didn't see the last video, what we're doing is basically called a flame fusion process. Same thing they use industrial to make ruby, obviously at a much better scale and also with much better equipment. 
but it's called a Vernoli furnace. Basically, you're injecting powdered, uh, these are aluminum oxide crystals for a uh, sandblast in your face uh, for microderm abrasion. And we got chromium oxide here, just off Amazon or eBay. And we're gonna do a 95 to five ratio by mass. So 95% aluminum oxide, 5% chromium oxide. And then we run that through the flame. We should get ruby. So let's mix some up, see what we get. Now another thing to note, most chromium compounds are pretty freaking, well, hexavalent chromium compounds are quite toxic. Here, this is a relatively inert form of chromium. Um, now if we were working with, uh, you know, potassium dichromate or something, be taking a lot of precautions with this stuff, but in this state, chromium oxide isn't really all that dangerous. Let's get it all nice and mixed up. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to run this through a coffee mill or, or a little coffee grinder that you don't care about, but I destroyed my old one. So <laughs> just going with hand agitation here. Now another method I want to try, I've been uh, working on it for the past while, building a, an electric arc furnace. So we're going to see if we can't make some ruby using an electric arc furnace as well. I think that'd be pretty damn cool. Got about two cc's of powder in there. I'm gonna throw my goggles on and get the flame going. See if we can't make a ruby. I'm gonna start out with a pretty weak flame just so I can get an idea of how everything works together. Doesn't look like we got much of anything there. All right, so definitely gonna take a little fussing to get right. Got these damn Michael J. Fox hands going on. Did I use up all the powder or did, did my feet get stuck? Oh, still quite a bit in there. All right, very first attempt, <laughs> bit of a miserable failure. Little bit of red in there, so we definitely made at least something resemblance, <laughs> slight resemblance of a ruby, but uh, not quite what we're looking for. Unfortunately, the uh, the feed got clogged a little bit. There must have been a bigger particle in there. So let's give it another go. Well, of course, I had a failure to record <laughs> during my first little successful spot. But you can see this kind of ugly looking dark spot here. And it looks like the start of a ruby. It definitely fluoresces. So uh, it is indeed ruby material, just not very, <laughs> very good looking ruby. It has a very slight kind of reddish tinge to it, but uh, this is turning out to be a lot harder than I thought it was going to be with the HH or uh, with the oxypropane. I really thought really thought it was going to be a lot better than with the HHO torch because we just had such a small volume of gas there and here you know I can crank this sucker up pretty good but that extra thousand degrees of heat really seems to be pretty damn critical ah, let's push on trying huh Definitely looks like we uh, grew something there. Hopefully I didn't burn out the sensor on my camera or my <laughs> my own biological sensor. These uh, welding goggles are a good 40 years old. <laughs> Look at these ancient things. Good old craftsman. 
Uh, I think this might be our most successful little attempt here. This looks like we grew something. It's not yet fluorescent, it needs to cool down. So here's the lovely new little piece we made and you can see it has developed a bit of a kind of pinkish red hue and it fluoresces pretty nicely but definitely not as nice as the ones we made with the HHO torch let's continue trying I want to get this sucker gonna get it nice and hot and then start adding the feedstock It definitely grew. Feel the heat coming off of that. It's unbelievable. Kind of neat the way it grew. Look at that. Starting to develop some color as it's cooling down. All right, guys, here it is. Definitely has some ruby color to it. It's not, not showing up super well, but it's pretty fluorescent as well. Camera's not picking it up quite so much, at least not that I can see. Definitely ruby. <laughs> I just whipped out the old vial of samples from uh, when we did it with the HHO torch. Much, much bigger than we were able to make with the HHO. Let me break this off and we'll we'll compare. So here they all are. So you can see this one's our oxypropane. These are the ones we made with the HHO torch, which definitely fluoresce a lot better than the oxypropane. So it's a mixed bag. Kind of sucks, but we were able to make one much bigger. <laughs> Nonetheless, pretty cool. So one thing I do want to try that I think will make this a lot more successful. Oh, there's some good ruby there on the base. <laughs> Is basically making a custom nozzle here. So using one of these and essentially putting a tube around it so that the Venturi basically I'd put the, uh, I'll, I'll sketch something up on CAD and throw it up here, but um, basically feeding the aluminum oxide, chromium oxide feedstock into that outer tube and having the venturi of the flame kind of pull it in uh, so it's much more precise rather than trying to inject this into the flame uh, very imprecisely. I think that would work a lot better. So I'm going to have to try to to make something there and see if we can't get because <laughs> at that point you could you could practically hook this sucker up to a 3d printer and print stuff out of rubies <laughs> which would be pretty damn cool so if we can figure out how to feed stock this better I think uh, I think we could really have a viable system here for essentially 3d printing rubies let me know what you guys think if you have other ideas on how to do this. Kind of fun, unintentional side effect found with this. <laughs> you can start aluminum fires. Look at that. And they kind of sustain. That crazy? I guess it's just the uh, kind of oxygen rich. 
<laughs> pretty, pretty damn cool though. I did make another ruby, this one a little bit more successful in terms of uh, color. It's definitely a kind of a pinker hue and fluoresces a little bit better. Where are the So at least this wasn't a total fail. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, click that little dingleberry next to subscribe so you can get notified when I post. And if you like the channel enough that you want to keep these videos rolling, uh, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon. It means more than you could ever know. I'm not the kind of guy to hold a hat out, but uh, if you are able to help out, for less than the price of a cup of coffee. Be a tremendous help to the channel. I will see you guys next time. Have a great one.